Well, it's, yeah, it's Saturday the 6th of October 2012. Welcome along to this week's United Kingdom Talk, boys and girls. And uh, just to let you know, mother and baby, that's uh, my niece and new baby George, are doing very well, I'm pleased to say. Although he did have to go to hospital um, after a couple of days after he was born. He had jaundice. And I look, you know how you look it up on the internet. Not always a good thing to do, to be honest. You know, look up almonds on the internet because you seem to t en end up with a lot more worse than what you thought you had and you haven't actually got it. If you see what I mean, you, know, you put on the internet, you know, type in headache. My God, the next thing you've got a brain tumour, you know, something like that. So I, I do warn people about, you know, if, if you've got something wrong with you. Perhaps it's not always a good idea to look it up on the internet. But I did look up jaundice in babies, and apparently quite a common occurrence, which I didn't know. Um, so my little niece, she's, she's having a bit of a rough time at the moment. It wasn't an easy birth at all. Because I think I told you in the last show, at the last minute the baby turned round, so it was back to back. And she had to have... Um, uh, 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 she had to go to theatre and she had a bit of a cut, you know what I mean and um, so she's not having a, a, a good time, then she got infection and then the baby got jaundice so they had to go back to hospital a couple of days later um, but uh, quite, an, quite a, uh, uh, an easy thing to fix the jaundice apparently um, according to my sister they just put the baby under a UV light eh, easy as that I mean she could have bought the thing round here she could have bought the child round here. I've got some UV lights that I use when I'm doing my mobile discos. So there we are. Just to let you know, uh, they're all doing very well. Uh, George and Tracy. And talking of uh, mobile discos, I did a very nice little party. On Saturday nights, I've started doing mobile discos again. I think I told you. And uh, last week, um, I did a 50th birthday party, which is in, was in a little community hall in... Hayes in Middlesex, Middlesex, which isn't too far away from me. So, you know, I'm the bloke that turns up with the lights and the sound and all that. And you set up in uh, a community hall and uh, it's all well and good. And a very nice night was had by all. As it happens, it was one of those surprise things, you know, where someone walks in. Uh, you turn all the sound off and all the lights. Someone walks in and everyone shouts surprise. Then they look really so then they look really surprised. I often wonder if the person is actually surprised. You know, because on their birthday, you say, oh, we're going out somewhere, and, and then you take them to a hall. I mean, it must go through their minds, mustn't it, that there's something happening here. And then they open the door, and surprise, and then they, they look shocked. And, and as you well know, I've got a big birthday coming up next February. And it is the last thing in the world I think I would want. I would absolutely hate... A surprise birthday party. Now, whether that is because it's what I do for a job, you know, I do DJing, I do karaoke, and I do quiz nights. The last thing I'd ever want is to go to a party celebrating my birthday. I'd hate it. Isn't that weird? I would absolutely hate it. I wonder what job you do. Do you do a job, perhaps, in a restaurant or something like that, and for your birthday, perhaps you're a waiter or waitress, manageress of a restaurant, something like that. I wonder, if I was to say to you, for your birthday, would you like to go out for a meal? Would you then not want to do that? Because that's your job. Do you get it? Huh? See what I mean? So I wonder what you think about that. My email address for your comments, as always, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. So it was very nice. And, of course, my favourite part of doing mobile discos is the buffet. Oh, yes. The buffet, there it is in the corner. Unfortunately, at the opposite end of the hall to where I was DJing. You know, so you kind of have to slink around the side, dark corners, you know, go over to the table, quickly help yourselves and then disappear back to the DJ area. <laughs> I went three times. Yeah, little, and my favourite things, because I'm vegetarian, is the little, little French sticks with bits of cheese and tomato on. I believe they're called bruschettas or something like that. They're quite nice. And they had some cheese Doritos, so very tasty indeed. We do like a buffet. So, very nice. And tonight, um, Saturday the 6th of October, 
uh, tonight. I've got another third, uh, six, uh, what is it, fiftieth birthday party uh, for a lady called Helen, who I've been in contact with. Um, I've never met the lady before, but she booked us to do the disco, and uh, we do seem to be getting on quite like a house on fire, to be honest. Uh, so I've got that to do tonight, and she's got the um, do not in a hall, but she's hired a marquee um, at the back in her garden. And I'm going to set up in there. And there's a catwalk as well. And I think uh, it's it's a fancy dress. So she wants a fancy dress competition. So I said to her, do you know who's who's going to do that? She says, oh, we hadn't thought about that. I said, well, I can do that for you. She says, so that's fine. So we're looking forward. I'm really looking forward to tonight's do. Not only that, it's her 50th birthday. I said, we're not, I'm not far off of that now as well. And her music list is very, very close to what I would... I personally would like myself. A lot of my favourites uh, within that list, so I'm really looking forward to doing that. A little bit later, that one. That's a one o'clock finish. Um, so there we are. So doing mobile discos at the moment. And, you know, since I mentioned that I was doing the mobiles again, uh, I've been very, very, very lucky, and the book is filling up. You know, the book's filling up. I'm now booked the whole of October, the beginning of November... And odd dates in December. And I can't believe how quickly some of this work has come in. Not necessarily from um, people wanting to book you, but other DJs who I'm good friends with who are booked on that date. And they're, they're you know, they've been doing the mobile for a while and sort of are, are, are very quite well known. I'm not so well known at doing the mobile. I used to do it in the 80s. And then 90s, 2000s, um, I've been in clubs and bars. Well, the Saturdays, I'd really quite like to go back to doing the mobile as a permanent sort of thing, I think, because it's, it's, it's great fun and it's, um, it's different every week. You see, you get a different, different hall, a different venue, a different crowd of people, a different celebration. It's different every week. You can never guess what it's going to be like. You could play the same music twice in twice, two weeks in a row and get completely different um, uh, reaction from the crowd. So I do like doing those. And I've been very lucky that this works coming in from other DJs who, you know, someone rings them up. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm booked. But um, give me a number. I'll get someone to ring you. Then they ring me. Are you booked? Yes, I'll take it. I ring them. And that's all well and dandy, really. And uh, I'd like to say, especially thanks to two people for doing it. Uh, Luke Daniel, um, who's uh, been chucking me a load of work. And uh, Ian James as well. Both do little mobile discos. And Ian's doing a... Uh, he's, done a whole, he's, he's a bit more business-like than, than myself or Luke. We're not really business-like, if you see what I mean. <laughs> you know and all that business um so cool so if you would like your mobile disco done by me on a saturday night or karaoke or quiz then give us an email okay my email address chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk one of the other things i love doing i think it's it's it, it's got to be possibly my favorite night of the week is the quiz night the quiz night i do a quiz night at the mayflower in uh, Rotherhithe, which is a little beautiful little pub right on the River Thames. I mean, on the River Thames, okay. And it's um, quite a quite an easy. Well, I say it's easy, you know. It's a it's an eight eight to eleven job on Tuesday night, so it's quite nice to be finishing at eleven o'clock, um, nice and early, at least one night of the week. And I go in there and I take my little, it's this tiny pub, there really isn't enough room uh, to move, but you, you, you make the best, you know. And uh, the staff are fantastic. The, the boss, Paul, and his mum, Anna, wonderful, wonderful people. They employ you and they leave you alone. I mean, you can't wish for a job more than that. You know, to be employed, to do what you do, and then get left alone. There are places, and I've mentioned this before, um, that they employ you. And then they start telling you, oh, well, can you do this? Can, oh, for God's sake, you know. I mean, I just actually left a place like that. I've got to tell you about this one. I've got to tell you about I won't say where it is or the name of the club. That's not fair. But I was doing this job, which was quite a distance away. OK, here's a scenario. So there's me, DJ. OK, there is the crowd. OK, which were quite young, sort of 23 to 25, I suppose, was the average age. Maybe a bit, even a bit lower than that, say 20, 21 to 25, I said, was the majority of the crowd. And there was the owner, owner, 37, and there was a manager, 32. Now, so. I already knew there was something not quite right there because 
when I went down to see it, have I told you this story last week? Oh, never mind. I'll tell it to you again. Um, when I went down to see it, I thought the DJ there was, was, was damn good. Really good. And I, I told him, you know, why are you getting rid of him? So and they said, oh, we don't think he's doing what we want. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, what it turns out is it seems that the owner is stuck in his teenage years. So you've got a crowd of 20 to 25 year olds demanding Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, uh, Beyonce, uh, the Saturdays, you know, the sort of thing. OK, One Direction, which I am putting on. That's how I work. I give people what they want. I try and give people what they want. And the manager also, uh, just uh, uh, much younger than me, is kind of on the same lines as me. You know, give them what they want. But the owner, ca owner came up to me at one fifteen on a Saturday night and asked for 70s and 80s till close at 2. And I'm like, are you sure? He said, yeah, why? I said, well, I said, it's up to you. I can play what you want me to play or I can play what the crowd is asking for. And he said, oh, I want you to do 70s and 80s, but you can change it back if you don't think it's working. And off he walked. Anyway, so I put this 70s and 80s and the complaints started coming because these kids, they don't know that music. I love it. I love it. I love a bit of Barry White, a bit of ABBA, you know, a bit of tight fit. I love all that stuff. But the kids don't know it. Um, and I thought, oh, I'll just do what he says and, and, and think about it. So I kept it going and people were moaning. And you were left to stand there looking like a bit of an idiot, really. And it got to the end of the night, and I said, look, I just, I'm sorry I quit. You know, it's never going to work, is it? It's never going to work. When you're running a bar or a club, unless you have advertised it as, I don't know, a 70s and 80s night, you cannot, you cannot put your preference of music over the... Music that the customers are asking for, within reason, okay? If, you know, you're doing a, a pop, everything's pop, 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 and then someone comes up and asks for some really heavy rap song and everyone's dancing at the time, you can't put that on. You can't, because everyone's going to sit down. You lose the floor. You lose the floor completely. Um, and I've always worked at, at give them as, as give them what they want. So that's what I do, you know, and, and, and when you, 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 when you've got a someone who owns a club or, or a manager who's 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 got his head stuck in his teenage years. But the customers have moved on. It's never going to work, is it? So years ago, I would have I would have argued the point, but I thought oh, I can't be bothered. So I just quit and I thought, let's go back to doing these mobiles. They're much better. And with the mobile discos, I always ask people to give us a list of songs, perhaps at their age, you know, 10 or 20 songs um, or more if they want. And they send this list through and I look at it and I get an idea of what they want. And uh, usually I'll make sure that I've got every single one of those songs as, as far as can be. It's never really been a problem before. And um, do it like that. And as I say, much looking forward to tonight because the lady tonight wants a lot of um, 80s soul and sort of jazz funk stuff. And it's all all waiting on the system, on the new system, incidentally. Can I just turn something on over here? Just a second. And get ready for that. There we are. Push a few buttons there. Does that work? No. Wrong password. There we are. Yeah, so looking forward to doing that today, uh, especially for the lady. Um, on the on the new computer, yes, we've bought a new new laptop now. I try and change my laptop every couple of years. I've just bought a, a Toshiba, and uh, it's all set up now. All the music's on there. All the software's on there. Everything seems to be working. Testing it last night. I must be honest, you know, I shouldn't really say this loud, but when when you've got a new computer, the first time you use it, you use it in a place where they know you. So if something goes wrong, it's not too bad. Mind you, always have a couple of sets of CDs with me anyway, just in case anything is um, dramatically uh, ruined. He says, taking a, taking a sip of tea. <clears throat> right, now let me see what else I've got to tell you about. Oh, yes, um, there's a little little karaoke competition going on at the moment. It's not a... Um, it's not a competition where there's a prize. There's no, like, £10 million at the end of it or anything like that, unfortunately. 
you know, I wouldn't mind ten million pounds. What'd I do with ten million pounds? I'd give I'd give it quite a lot away. Um to my sister and her family, maybe a couple of friends as well. Yeah. I think I think I'd probably give a lot away. And I'd have what'd I do? I'd probably buy houses. I think I, it wouldn't just sit in the bank. I'd buy houses uh for people to rent. Yeah, I would. I quite like that. As you know, I'm a landlord um, now. And a lot of the stuff I do, it's, it's not even about... It's not, it really isn't about the money. I, I quite like the idea that I have, I've got some, some places that people live in. I'm give, not, you're not giving them a home. They're paying rent, of course they are. But nevertheless, you've got that upkeep and all that, and I do try and keep the places. It's quite a nice feeling to know that someone's got a home because of you. You know, and I think if certainly if I was to win the lottery or something like that, I would invest. I would invest in some more places, um, sort of a, a reasonable level of rent for people. I quite like to do that. Um, very embarrassing this week. So I've gone into the Virgin Active Place in Wokingham. Incidentally, did anyone see the little article in the paper this week? Woke, Wokingham is uh, where the place in the UK that. People are most happy at living in. And I go there every day. Well, Monday to Friday. I do. I'm there every day. Off to the Virgin Active Swimming Pool. But this week, disaster struck on Wednesday, dear. Disaster. So I walked in there. The sliding doors were open. And there's this, there's this woman on the till who's a bit... She's not horrible or anything like that. She's a bit to the rules. Do you know what I mean? You can you can tell she you know if it's not written in the rule book she probably won't let it happen anyway so I've gone in and I've I've slid my card through the thing and the gates didn't open well that's happened before so I slid it again and again nothing so I went to the desk so she said all right just a moment starts tapping away oh no you haven't paid your fee for this month oh, how embarrassing is that dear you know how embarrassing for someone to have to ask for the money I never do that I always pay it up front. Anyway, I thought I'd paid up to December, but I hadn't. It was paid up to September. Fortunately, she did let me in. As she did let me in, I was able to swim that day and bring along the 50 quid to her the next day. So it wasn't too bad, but very bad. Thank God there was no one watching, dear. It's a little bit like that time, and I'm sure you've had it, ladies. When you're in that supermarket, aren't you? You get to the till and you haven't got quite enough money, have you? Oh, can I put back that milk, please? Oh, can I book back that large bar of chocolate? I never know what to put back. I really don't. Do you? Does it happen to you at all? Do let us know. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot, uh, co dot UK. Uh, the other cat that moved in, I told you another cat's moved in. Her name's Kizzy. Actually, do you want to see her? Because my best friend's downstairs. He might, he might bring her out. Just a second. See if I can bring up. She's the most beautiful cat. Ron! Can you bring up Kizzy? One minute, one minute. You can bring up the cat, could you? Could you bring up Kizzy a minute? Kizzy? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, where's, where's Katie? Can Katie see that you're bringing the other one into the house? Yeah. Um. Right, Okay. Right, anyway, so this cat has been following me around. I told you about her last week. She's moved in. She moved in now. And um, yesterday, she's been here about two weeks. Yesterday, I th and I know where she's come from, that lady down the end there. Um, I actually took her back to the lady yesterday. I said, look, your cat keeps coming in. So, oh, thanks ever so much for bringing her back. Um, uh, and, <clears throat> and she took her off me and took her in. Well, half hour later, the cat was back again. You know, so she obviously wants to live here. Now, this cat is 20 years old. Her name's Kizzy. And she's the spitting image of my old cat, Tiny, that died a while ago. So I'll get her. Ronnie's going to bring her up. My best friend's downstairs. um, Because uh, he has no interest in my show at all, boys and girls. No interest. We're going to bring her up and uh, you can have a little look at her. Is she coming? Here she comes. This is Kizzy. Such a friendly cat. One minute. All right. Thank you, darling. Here she is. I like Kiz. All right, this is Kizzy. Look at this lovely cat. Aren't you? Eh? Don't go too far. I want you to take her down again. Have you disappeared? No, I'm watching oh. from Katie. There you are. Look, this is Kizzy. And she purrs. Listen. Kizzy. 
Can you hear that? It's a very, very quiet pair. Isn't she the most beautiful cat? And she loves me, I think. Do you love me? Hey? <laughs> but it's, it, it's wrong of me to keep her because it's someone else's cat. But like I say, I took her home yesterday. Within half an hour, she'd come back again all of her own accord. Hey? And she's doing that thing with her paws now. So there we are. That's Kizzy, 20 years old. There you go. All right. It's the hands. Just see the hands. He doesn't want to show his face for some reason. See you later, kids. That's what makes me... Makes you what? Mysterious? Yes. <sighs> Nothing mysterious about you, dear. I shan't be much longer. Thank you. Now, the only thing is, um, Katie, my cat, doesn't... She's not too keen on the idea at the moment. Um... I've seen a couple of hissing fits from both of them, actually, so I'm not quite sure how to deal with that. I've had a look on the internet, actually, and I found a few stories of people who um, have bought new cats in. Uh... I I think maybe it's just a matter of time and you've just got to leave them alone and get on with it, really. But this is a, a rather wonderful story, OK, that I found from some cat forum. Um, and someone said that they bought a cat in and what have you, and the other cat wasn't getting on. Here's what someone replied. She'll be fine. This is, you know, the, the old cat that's already there. She'll be fine. I hope you keep your cats indoors. The fact you said your cats were afraid she'd run away if she's indoors, which all cats should be, she won't be running away. After my mum's male cat died five years ago, my female cat, aged ten, was left all alone. I figured she'd get lonely without her friend. So off to Helen Woodward Animal Shelter we went to get a male kitten. Well... When we got there, we found Spike, three months old, and we fell in love. And there was Buffy, a three-month-old female who I just adored. So they said, since your mum's a senior, old age pensioner, we give you a discount. So three hours later, they put you through adoption hell for animals, which is a good thing, but it takes hours. And $268 later, because this is in America, we left with our two new kittens. I figured Dinky, my 10-year-old, would um, love it when she saw two little kittens. Although a lot of people said that kittens make their older cat young again. Well, Dinky did not want anything to do with either kitten for months. And I mean months. Finally, after eight months, there was some headway. Of course, by that time, we'd rescued a black female, aged three, and introduced her into the house. And a year after that, we rescued a male, aged four. And last year, we really rescued a tortured, beat-up and abandoned, declawed female, aged nine. So five years have passed, and we have six indoor cats. Dinky is now 15 years old, and she acts like she is three. She plays, she jumps, she fights, she wants to be with Spike all the time. They all sleep together except for Willow, the rescued one that was tortured. Sleep, she sleeps with my mum. She needs extra care. She's still very withdrawn. It takes time, but all cats will eventually get along. Just give your cat time. I think you'd be slightly wiggled out if a new person was introduced into your house that you didn't know. And when you think about it, that's true, isn't it? How would you like it if someone just moved into your house? You wouldn't, would you? It must be the same for cats. And for God's sake, keep your cats indoors. You will save their lives. So there we are. Uh, nice little, I don't know who wrote that, but I thought that was a lovely little piece there that I found. So I think it's just a matter of time, really, um, to see how all these cats get on together. All right. OK, emails. Um, oh, yes. The, sorry. Karaoke thing. I was telling you a thing. There's this karaoke awards thing. There's no money or prize or anything like that. But I mean, it's, it's just a thing that uh, someone's running. Some of the karaoke people are running. And I wondered if I could get your vote. Do you mind me asking for a vote? I'm only going to ask once. Um, 
But if you look on the sort of summary of this program, or indeed on my Facebook wall, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. All right, if you're not a friend, just add me on there. Chris Reardon UK is my Facebook name. Uh, or on the program summary, you'll see a little link to a karaoke vote. And you'll see my name on there, Chris Reardon. Could you vote for me? Do you mind? Because I'm a little bit lacking. A little bit lacking. I'm about a quarter of the way up from the bottom, I think, at the moment. So I would appreciate that little karaoke vote. All right. OK, emails. Hello to uh, Ian. Hello, Ian. Nice to hear from you, sir. He says, um, uh, where's that gone now? Not sure if you have access for them, but please would you send me a few clips uh, because he's looking around under video and graphics. Um, for he, want, he does little videos as well and he wants sort of an intro and an outro. Well, Ian, there's a site that I use. All those video intros and outros, those of you that watch the show on YouTube will know that I've got several different ones now. Um, I pay for those. They are very, very cheap. I found this site, I've mentioned it before, called Fiverr.com, OK? F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And on there, you will find people um, who are willing to do things for $5, one of the things they will do is make you little video intros and outros. They do pictures, all sorts of things, all sorts of strange and wonderful things on there. And that's where I get my video intros from. OK, so Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot com, says Ian. And um, so I sent him that email and uh, <laughs> he says, he says, um, thanks, Chris. Maybe I'll end up making my own to save five dollars. Well, good luck to you. You know, if you can do that, it's it's not. I've got to be honest. It's not something I could do. The whole computer thing, make a website, all that. That is not something I can do. And frankly, it's not something I want to do either. I'd, I'd rather, you know. Oh, you can do that, right? I'll give you. Quite happy to give someone five dollars to do some wonderful work like that. And uh, uh, they do do a pretty good job of that. All right. Thank you, Ian. Hello to Stella. Hello, Stella, who writes, Chris, let me tell you a few facts about the flu, because we're talking about the flu jab. I no longer take the flu jab, as every year I end up getting the flu in the summer. So while everyone's sunbathing, I'm sniffing. Not very nice, oh dear. I do hope you've got plenty of tissues with you, Stella. We can't have that snot rolling around all on blooming sunbeds and things like that when you're sitting out in the sun. The flu jab only works for six months and your doctor is so nice. If I was your doctor, I'd tell you straight your illness is called old age. Oh, you horrible person, Stella. Old age, me? I've got years ahead of me yet, yeah? years. And do you know what? I've booked, I've been booked to do this show for the next 300 years. And I intend to talk for every possible second that I can. Stella also says, I've deleted myself today from two moaning minis on Facebook. Like you, Chris, I ain't going to beg to stay friends with them. Yeah, these are the people, of course, uh, those of you on Facebook, you'll, you'll see them now and again, who suddenly announce to the world that, oh, I'm fed up with all these people I don't know. I'm going to have a Facebook cull. My advice to you, when you see people like that on there, delete them. Delete them and send them a message. Don't bother deleting me for your Facebook cull because I've already deleted you. And they come running back. Oh, no, wasn't you. It's like they want to say, oh, please be my friend. Please, can I remain one of your Facebook friends? I don't think so, dear. As soon as you see that, I'm having a Facebook cull. Delete them and send them a message. Don't bother having your cull. I've already culled you. You've got to get in first. You've absolutely got to get in first. All right. Look who it is, someone I haven't heard from for months and months and months. It's young Yannick, who's in Germany. Hello, Yannick, who says, hello, Chris. It's great news you finally made a return to the broadcast airwaves. To be quite honest, I had a hunch you'd be back with your show in September. Only recently, it dawned on me that I've been listening to this program now for five years. It simply staggers belief. Where did all that time go? I wonder, Yannick. If you put all my shows back to back, how long would they go on for? Can you just imagine listening to that could be like a form of torture, couldn't it? You know, if we get any sort of, you know, dodgy people in this country, one of the in, instead of putting them in prison, 
you could have some implants into their ears that they couldn't remove and constantly play my chat shows to them. That would do their bloody brains in, wouldn't it? I, I don't think they'd commit another offence. I would also like to thank you for the inspiration you've given me to launch my very own radio show, even though it's not as regular and well put together content-wise as this show. Well, I do try. Um, I, I, You know, Yannick, I, I, I listen and I watch bits of my own show just to criticise, really, and I do think it's a load of old rubbish. I do, <laughs> I do so it's nice of you to say that. Um Yannick says, it's bas- my show is basically a show consisting of several seasons, with the first one currently running. As opposed to your chat show, I broadcast with a co-host, Ross Patzelt. If anyone interested, they can give it a listen. It's called Super Talk with Blue Boy and Roscoe. Why are you called Blue Boy? Have you got blue toes or something like that? So far, we're only three episodes into the first season, with new episodes being recorded at irregular intervals. Anyway, I thought I'd spread the word. In my eyes, you'll forever remain a broadcasting legend. Aren't legends dead? I'm not dead, fortunately. A broadcasting legend. It's nice of you to say that. Along with the likes of Tommy Boyd and Chris Moyles. Keep up the great work. Lots of yav yank. And the one thing... Thank you, Yannick. It's very nice of you to say those things. The one thing you didn't do is give me the website of the Blooming Talk Show, dear. How can I advertise it without... The t- I bet if you type in Super Talk, you won't find that, will you? So what's the website? And uh, I'll give it out on the next show, OK? Gilamo, hello, sir. I was laughing like a kid in church, says Gilamo, when I saw your most recent iTunes podcast of the show. You make life fun with your insight on it and your approach to living. Indeed, everything you mention on your show is relevant to any one of your viewers. Do you think so? When I become a big corporation, I would love to sponsor you and have my business logo behind you. Anything you do... Uh, is first rate done. Top marks. Thank you, Gilamo. There's lots of thanks coming in this week, isn't there? Lots of thanks. It's nice. It's nice. It was awesome to see Ronnie on your last broadcast. The exchange between the two of you was Oscar worthy. Please keep up the awesome broadcast. Dinner date when I make it out your way. Uh, regards, Nemo from San Mateo, California. Nemo, are you a fish as well? I don't know if you're a fish. I always feel sorry for fish. Going round and round in those little bowls all the time. They must get so bored. Fish. How pissed off would you be going round and round in a little bowl like that? Would do my brain in, it would. Hello to um, James Bates. Hello, James. Who says, hi, Chris. Hope you get better soon. Oh, yes. uh, Yes, the um, steroid tablets. As you can hear, the asthma's gone. It's gone. Completely gone. I told you, those steroid tablets are blooming good, they are. Within a day... Most of the problem is cleared up. You carry on taking the pills, I think, for... I think it's five days altogether, and they, they do work very well. If you're having breathing problems, it's best to check out the ones... Uh, oh, sorry. Hang on. We got mixed up there. Try to start that again. Hi, Chris. Hope you get better soon. If you're having breathing problems, it's best to check it out, which indeed I did, and uh, we're sorted now. The ones that annoy me are those that dial 999 just because they have a paper cut or something silly like that. I've seen it on these TV programmes and there are even clips on YouTube highlighting it. it is, yeah, it's, it's shocking, actually. Some people waste the ambulance and the fire service and the police dialing 999 for minor things and you really shouldn't do it. You know, someone having a heart attack or something like that needs to dial 999 quick. Or indeed a, a, a bad asper attack. That's a 99. A cut finger or perhaps a broken broken wrist or something like that I don't think is really a 999 thing. If you can get to the hospital yourself, you should do that. And of course, we're very lucky here in the UK having the NHS. We don't pay to call out an ambulance. You just pick up the phone You dial the number and it comes, you know, somewhere like the States. And I believe I'm not sure about Australia. Um, Perhaps uh, any of our Australian listeners or viewers will be able to tell you this. Do you have to pay in Australia to call out an ambulance? Do let us know on the email, please. All right, Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Glad that Katie, your cat, is okay and back to normal and making guest appearances today. Not today. She's downstairs at the moment because the two the two cats are not quite getting on at the moment. Glad that Ron is okay and congratulations on being a great uncle too. Second time this year. 
The flu jab you'd had, uh, does it include the swine flu vaccine this year? I had the swine flu vaccine too with the normal flu vaccine too. I don't know, actually. I was just, just, I asked for the flu injection and that's what they gave me. So no idea, to be honest, James. He says, Saturday the 29th of September show was okay, but the one you had that had a bit of an echo on it. Oh, you mean this? Do you mean this? That echo? Was it that echo? Yeah, I left. See, if I turn the buttons up a little bit, and I sometimes I leave them on accidentally like that, so you can hear a bit of an echo. Can you hear that echo? It's not on there. I must remember to turn those off. He said, I'm not sure if it was my end or not, but I thought we'd let you know in case other people get it and find a problem. Yeah, it wasn't anything wrong. I just left the buttons on. As for the rainwater from the water butt, is it safe to drink in your tea as any germs would be killed off when boiled in a kettle? Yeah, the thing is, it, it, it may well be, but the water looks dirty when it comes down from the roof. Now, I gather there's some sort of water treatment. And actually, when I finish the show, Ron and I are going to the um, chips. We're going to have fish and chips for lunch today. And um, after that, I'm going to go down to the uh, uh, Sainsbury's home base and get some. They do a, a water butt treatment. But whether or not you could, I, I don't think I'd want to drink that water. It, is, it does seem to be quite filthy when it comes down from the roof. He says, um, any germs would be killed off when boiled in the kettle. Yes, you're probably right, but still it would look dirty. And I, you know, I don't need to do that. As for Millie, sorry to hear of her loss. I know she's been a very long time listener of yours and I listened to the interview you did with her um, and it was a good interview. It was a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? Do you remember that? When Millie came over here from the States and she came to the karaoke night, one of the karaoke nights, and she stayed at uh, the, was it the Hyatt Park Hotel or the Hyatt? I can't remember. It was a beautiful hotel in Hoban in London. And I went over to see her with my camera and my sound recording equipment, and we did a little show there. Um, I, you know, it's, it's nice to do that. But it might be quite nice to actually meet up with some people and do shows like that, if I've got the time to do it. You know, it's, it's all, all time, isn't it? As for the show, it's nice to hear the shows when you can do them. It's always nice to hear United Kingdom talk, uh, whether it's an hour or however long. As for Thagash Lil, I have heard from her. She's OK. She's been very, very busy at the moment. And that's from James. Yes, uh, I know she's OK. I do, do get, get little messages now and again coming to and from uh, Thagash Lil. All right. Hello to Rick Porter. Who says, uh, hi, Chris, if you think your doctor's office visit was cool, that's remember I said because they've got the screen at the top and it says, Chris Reardon, please go to doctor, whatever, in, sir, in, in room one. And a little screen flashes up your name. Well, uh, Rick says, my doctor sends me a tech mes text message to remind me a week two days and the morning of your appointment. But alas, but he says, but also they send you a text message when your turn in the queue is ready. Oh, so you're all sitting there, mobile phones going off, this right and the other. Rick also sends me a link to a company called Aqua Pro. And he says, this will keep you from having to get a bucket of water during the dark nights of the winter. Now, if you were watching the last show, you'll know uh, I'm now on a water meter and I fitted myself two water butts to collect the water from um, uh, the roof. And uh, actually, yesterday, I, I, this week, I've completely emptied one tank, one water butt of water, which is 200 litres in five is it four or five days? 200 litres of water. And I'm using the water to flush the toilets. And what I do is I've got a bucket under the water butt. I fill it up. I use the toilet. I chuck down a bucket of water. That's it. And in four days, I've used 200 litres. So it just goes to show you how much water we lose. We use. Anyway, so that's one. So I've got the other one. The other one's still full up. But what, So one 200 litre completely empty. Last night it rained. That bucket... Oh, you've gone all blurry. Just a minute. Why have you gone all blurry? You've gone all blurry. Look at that. Just, what's, why have you gone blurry? Oh, one second. Something's gone wrong there. Let's, let's just reset that. Is that better? There we are. Don't know what happened there. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, and last night it rained. The water butt completely filled up with that one lot of rain. So it just goes to show you... How much water there is out there, which is simply washed away down the drains. 
I do think the government should do something about that. Perhaps we could have water tanks filled in, obviously, the way I'm doing it, you know, the way I fill up a bucket, chuck it down the toilet. That is the simplest way. Ideally, this would all be plumbed in. And, um, so Rick sends us this thing, Aqua Pro, and it's the grey water recycling system, and basically the the rain goes into some sort of tank. It, it integrates, it goes into a tank, and then um, feeds your toilet systems like that, so it's all automatic. So it's, it's great to look at something like that, but my guess is it would be quite an expensive thing to install. And uh, is this is this British? Oh, it is British. I think I don't know if anyone actually s sells this stuff. Uh, sorry, installs this stuff. It looks to me like it's one of those things that you buy and you've got to install yourself. And I don't think I'd be comfortable with pipes and things like that. You know, I'd probably end up with a house completely flooded or something like that. But that's the way to do it, you know. So uh, instead of doing it the way I'm doing it, what you'd have is you'd have some sort of, you know, the water from the gutter would then feed into a tank, perhaps, probably in the loft, because it's got to be higher than the toilets, into the loft. And then that itself would have an overflow type thing going outside if just in case too much water came in or took it back down the drain somehow and then you'd feed the toilet systems directly from that so you wouldn't take the mains water and uh probably that would be a very good thing to do so thank you for that very interesting hello to marge hello marge darling how are you last email today boys and girls uh from marge Talking about the flu again, Marge writes, when I was six years old, we lived in Slayton in Texas. I remember having the flu when we went to Lubbock, Texas, a town. Is it Lubbock? Lubbock, Texas, a town about 10 miles away from Slayton to see a doctor. The waiting room was very dark. And as we waited for a bit, the doctor finally came down this dark corridor looking like a Frankenstein monster. <laughs> Do you remember, years ago, of course, we, you, we were allowed to smoke in doctor's surgeries. You just, people just used to smoke in there. Could, be, could barely sleep for all these clouds of smoke. Um, Marge says, he was very tall, dark and skinny, with a long coat, and I couldn't barely see his face. He reminded me visually of Abraham Lincoln, but more of a gothic sense. He announces, next, in a very low drawn out deep voice then i sort of shivered a bit and followed him into the examination room he proceeded me to give a shot of penicillin and after the exam my mum and dad took me home after getting home my lungs started not working right i began gasping for breath and i felt like my lungs would not expand they rushed me back to the doctor's office and as we traveled i breathed air from the rolled down window of the car it was then that I found out I was allergic to penicillin. So the doctor gave for another shot to counteract my reaction to the penicillin. It was a very memorable and scary experience. Yes, because you can get allergies uh, for that, can't you? And very, da very dangerous it is as well. Some people are allergic to this stuff. She said, on your last show, starting at about 5 minutes 15 seconds, I had to put it on pause, could not stop laughing. You said you lifted up your thing. Shame on you, Chris. <laughs> I can't even remember. What was that about? What was it I lifted up? <laughs> you get me laughing so hard before watching any more videos. I'm going to have to buy Depends for Adults. What's that Depends for Adults? I don't know what that is. She also sends a, a link, a natural help for your asthma, which I'm going to take a look at. I haven't looked at that yet, so thank you very much. I know that you love part people trying to doctor you. Oh, I can't stand it. You know, it's like my, I've got an aunt that I ring every night now. Her husband died a couple of years ago. She was uh, my mum's sister, who herself died 13 years ago. And uh, also her brother died couple of years ago she's, she's very much on her own now so i ring her every night and i don't dare tell her if i if i go <coughs> oh have you got a cough and if oh no i wish i hadn't coughed or perhaps you should see the dot i can't st oh i hate that i hate it but uh, people only mean well don't they you know 
Mark says, I think long hair is on guys is great, but you look great. Military ready in fracks. I don't, I can't stand long hair. Especially blokes with ponytails. Men with ponytails. That just looks awful. Men with, have you seen it? A lot of those, are you, I think I've seen it on the, um, the WWE wrestling. Some of the blokes on there, they have ponytails. What on earth is all that about? No, thank you. You were talking about pasties. We call pasties like you're talking about sound like what we call long johns here. Cream filled long donut type outer side may not be the same, but sounds similar. I can't eat them due to blood sugar issues. No, you got that wrong, Marge. Uh, when I say a pasty, a pasty is a savoury thing. You could have meat in it. I have cheese and onion, or they do vegetable pasties. It's, you don't put cheese in that in. What you've sent me there, and you've sent me a picture of, I think, what you would call a past, uh, a long john. That is what you've sent me there. We would call a chocolate cream eclair. And very tasty they are too. Sometimes you get four in a box, you know, one each. Or four for one in my case, thank you. March says, I've gained a lot. Uh, I have gained and lost almost the equivalent to three people. <laughs> It's not about the weight. I am obese uh, at the moment myself. And to me, it's not about what you're eating, but what's eating you, symbolically, of course. I started eating more veggies and fruits, laying off bread, which is how I gained it. But large women, as long as they are healthy in some regards, are fine as well. We don't all need to be twiggy. You do realise this. Yes. Yes. Because I said to you last week, didn't I, that I'd found this little thing... Um, in the uh, newspaper that said you can be fit and fat or overweight now take for myself for example you know I've got a bit around the middle here but I go swimming every day I do 60 lengths Monday to Friday I cycle for about an hour and 20 minutes most days of the week I walk around I stand up at work I dance a bit while I'm working you know so I'm quite fit but a bit overweight which I guess is um okay um, let me see. Ah, on the subject of, uh, I'm happy you're frugal with your water. Go green. I'm very green. I've got solar panels on the roof. They've been up there a few weeks. I turn things off when I'm not using them. But she says, Chris, I would put something in that water system uh, that causes the water to go stale if it stays in the toilet and then can cause you some bacteria. I think, just use the hippo bag and toss it in the trash. You won't use any water at all. <laughs> no, I found this thing, actually. Um, water butt treatment. Like I said to you at the beginning of the show, I'm going to buy some of that later and put it in the water butt, OK? I think I've lost it. I've possibly lost a page of your email here. Or part, just a minute, because there's, there's a bit there at the top of this, and it says, all baby girl, babies are girls to the last. Now, there's a little bit of the email missing here somehow. I've got both pages, but I'm sure there's a bit, there's like a sentence or two missing somehow. Anyway, um, she says, Chris, what you do is not a load of old rubbish. Oh, yes, it is, Marge. It's a load of old rubbish. You're a very lovely person and wish you could see how you were affecting people in your life. I was deeply depressed before finding your videos. I never needed to buy Depends, which is adult diapers, by the way, before now. Oh, yes. <laughs> From all the laughter you give, you're a blessing. Yep. Uh, uh, was that the club I was talking about? Did I tell you about that or not? It was a few years ago now. I was working in this in this club. You know, when when you were... When, when you're doing the DJ and and I've said before, an, an elderly DJ years ago told me, if you have a night off and you're offered a job, take it. If the money's right, take it. Doesn't matter what it is, what sort of job it is, where it is. If the money's right, you take the job. I've always worked like that. It's always seen me OK. And one of the jobs I used to do was at this place now. I started at 10 o'clock, but before me was this specialist night. Let's, let's just say specialist night, OK? So I would go in there to set up and there would be this specialist night going on. 
And it was basically full of people in what can only be described as baby wear. Adult baby wear. I'm, I'm quite serious. And one of the items, <laughs> I don't want to be too graphical here, that they were wearing were indeed adult diapers or nappies. And, you know, you, you've, you've got to go in and just get on with it, really. And I used to go in there and set up. I always remember someone coming up to me. And he, he had a diaper on. And he was holding a teddy bear. And he came, oh, hello, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm doing DJing later. All oh, right, are you anything to do with this? I said, no, no, just doing the DJing. OK, then. And you've got to keep a completely straight pace, face when you're talking to him. And there's been other, other, other nights... You know, other nights that I've done, really. And you, you you go in there and you get on with it. I'm sure you know exactly what I mean. Another night, there was all sorts of, you know, it was very dark in this other place and I'd been booked to do the DJ and I'd never been there before. I only did it once. And I was setting up doing a DJ and there was no one dancing. It was very dark. There was lots of sort of dark corners. And now and again you'd hear, or... I mean, what, what do you say? You, you just get on with it, you finish the job, you collect your wages and you go home, and that, that's it. I'm afraid that's it, you know. <laughs> there are some very strange people out there, Marge, there really is. She said, one reminder, please turn off any lights that you can. When not in a room, conserve and be frugal. Go green. I do. I do turn all my lights off. Whenever I'm not in a room, those lights go off, OK? Um, Marge also says, on the subject of my lovely niece going into the uh, operating theatre, she says, I can't believe in the UK you call it a theatre. It's like a movie theatre and there are actors. Neat name, though, I suppose. We come into this world as life is a stage, but we're not actors. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, we call places where they do operations on people theatres here. You obviously don't call them that in the States. Marge also wants to know um, about, how, can you advise me on the steps that you use to make your videos? Not the actual production, just how you make it into a video and upload it to the internet. Well, the cheapest way to do it, I, she says, I'm having problems with grainy and huge AV eyes when I do capture from a camera, uh, if you get time. So I've, I've answered privately uh, to Marge. But basically, um, you have some free software, I think, on most computers now uh, to do movies and things like that uh, certainly windows movie maker comes with windows and i'm pretty sure the apple computers also come with some wonderful i think apple is probably the best one uh, that you've got i haven't got apple i've got a, a pc and i, I the, the software i use to put it all together after i finished uh, making the show is adobe premiere elements that's the one i've used for the last three or four years now that's what i use just for the video side of things and uh, you, you've really got to just play around with it marge i mean and, and once you, you're happy with what you've got just stick to it and make notes down don't forget your settings because then you have to start all over again okay Boys and girls, it's time for me to go. Thank you very, very much for joining me uh, on the show this week. If you want to join me at any of my other little bits and pieces um, that I do, sort of, you know, live events, uh, either some DJing or karaoke or quiz nights, then uh, do check out my um, Facebook page, Chris Reardon UK, all right? Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And what, every day, whatever I'm doing, I put a little note out there. And if you ever want to come along, then it'd be very nice. And do please come up and say hello. Hello, I'm so and so. Pleased to meet you. It's always nice to have a chat with people. Join in by email. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address. Thanks so much for watching and listening. See you on the next show.